When it comes to recording, there are different types of microphones and equipment that can be used to ensure that you have the best possible audio for your type of content. There are different types of microphones that are used for certain things. This is because they have different pickup patterns, so whatever the cause, you can get the most effective audio using the right one. The shotgun mic. This mic is usually used for interviews of one person. This microphone can also be used when attached with a camera, therefore helpful to an interview. This microphone picks up the sound it is pointed at. If it's pointed outwards, it would pick up all of the background noise as well as the front voices. This is known as the supercardioid pattern when it's picking up sound. We're using a condenser microphone, also known as a shotgun. But because of the weather, this may affect the sound quality. We are using a condenser mic as before. This time we are in the atrium. In this atrium, there are a lot of people, so we might be able to hear a lot of people talking. Um, we're still using a condenser mic. We are now in a stairwell. This might not be a good idea because of the echo. Handheld. As the name states, this type of microphone is held, which means that it can be easily moved around. However, handheld microphones are often used by TV presenters, news anchors or stand-up comedians. This sound pattern is known as cardioid, which travels at 180 degrees but has less range than a shotgun mic. This mic can also be put into a microphone stand for singers. Lavalier. This is used for television, theatre and public speaking. It is a hands-free microphone that is provided with a clip to attach to your clothing. These are often supplied with a push-on grills for different lengths that give a softer high frequency. A PZM mic is a great way to record group interviews because it picks up a lot of sound from multiple directions. Known as a omnidirectional mic. There are different types of pickup patterns with microphones. They are omnidirectional, bidirectional, unidirectional, cardioid and supercardioid. Formats. Format. There are different ways to format and compress your audio, which should be carefully chosen. Dependent on what you are going to do with the audio, it must be in a different format. The three major groups of file formats are uncompressed, lossless and lossy. The reasoning behind the use of each could be higher quality or simply a smaller audio file. Compressing a file makes it faster to download and can save storage space. Uncompressed. When sound is uncompressed, it keeps its good quality of sound and it isn't messed with. Whereas, if it is compressed, it gets a different continuous beeping. WAV is a form of Microsoft file container format. It is used on Windows storage systems for storing uncompressed and lossless audio. AIFF is also known as audio interchange file format. It is one of the top audio file formats used by Apple. Lossless. Lossless audio is most commonly used for production purposes. For example, if you have iTunes, then the music will be compressed but the quality will not be lost. It stores audio in a more compact space without losing any of the info. Free Lossless Audio Codec, also known as FLAC, is a codec for lossless audio compression. FLAC is similar to MP3 but is lossless, meaning when it is compressed it doesn't lose its quality. These files can be WAVPAC, extension known as WV, TTA, V, w. WMA lossless, and ALEC. Yeah. Lossy. This type of format has the lowest quality, file size, and format. Lossy audio loses quality, the most known one being MP3. This means that the audio will lose quality but will take up less space. Also, there is WMA Lossy from Microsoft, AAC, which is similar to MP3 but has better sound quality, and ATRAC from Sony. MPEG-4, which is also known as MP4, is a better option than MP3 and is an audio and video file format, whereas MP3 is meant for just audio. Bitrate. The higher the bitrate, the larger the file size and the better the quality. MP3 has the smallest bitrate and the benefit of this is that it has a faster download speed. However, if the MP3 file has a rate of 320 kilobits per second, which is the largest supported level for MP3, then you may not be able to hear the difference between it and an uncompressed file. Acoustics are the effect that you may face when you are recording your audio in certain places. Large halls, shiny flat walls and stairwells may all cause echo. Being outside could mean that you can pick up wind or rain. Background noises such as crowds of people. Invest in acoustic foam or panels so that the sound doesn't bounce off walls. 
Use a windshield, also known as a dead rat or a kitten. Don't ask why, we don't know. A mic pop shield, used to stop the popping noise creating by the high... Creating noise? A pop... A mic pop shield used to stop the popping noise created by high frequency when saying words starting with P. In certain situations, you should use certain microphones. If you are asking people to answer a few questions, not organised, you should use a shotgun microphone. This will give you the best outcome, as it is quick to set up, and if you place it in a good position, it will not gain much background noise. Whereas, if you use a lavalier, which is usually used when interviewing, it takes time to set up and it's best for an organised interview as it will pick up volume and audio. We use headphones so that we can clearly hear the audio and so that anything distracting can be blocked out. An XLR connector is mainly used for professional audio, video and lighting equipment. They are large connectors with pins that link to the phantom power. Now the phantom power is the power transmitter that operates a microphone. A condenser microphone needs power to work, so would you, you so you would use one of these so that it can work. This is also used professionally. You have different sized phone connectors such as the average 3.5 mm or a 6.35 mm jack, which is also known as a quarter. Sound meters such as PPM, which means peak program meter, are used so that you can monitor if you are reaching peak level. This is when the sound reaches an all-time high and may become distorted. It is very hard to fix sound that has reached such a high, which is time-consuming. This is why you would use a recording device which displays the decibels whilst you speak. Rhythm. Rhythm involves a beat or pulse, a pace or a tempo. This is mostly recognised in music in a film as it is the most common thing to have a rhythm to it. Filmmakers often match the rhythm of the music to match the part of the scene to create the right effect. Such as Jaws, when the person is being chased by a shark, the music suddenly gets more tense. For this part of the film, the tempo gradually builds to become more tense as it slowly builds. I don't know what to say, really. Music isn't the only thing to have rhythm to it. Speech does often Three have minutes. a rhythm to it as well, such as any we'll given Sunday. Of our professional lives, all comes down to today. Either we heal as a team, or we're going to crumble. Inch by inch, play by play, till we're finished. Contrapuntal. Contrapuntal sound is when sound doesn't fit the scene. This is common in children's films and horror, like Insidious. Tiptoe through the tulips is used in this intense scene. Parallel. Parallel sound is when the sound fits with the scene on the screen. If the scene is dark and eerie, commonly sound like this accompanies it like in the Silent Hill scene. It is a dark and eerie scene and the music matches. Synchronous. When the sound is in time with the actions present on screen, for example during a conversation, it is known as synchronous sound and is used in pretty much every film. It creates realism and makes the actions more believable. On the other hand, asynchronous sound is sounds that are not visible on screen, which you can see in this scene from the Hunger Games. This could be to create a certain atmosphere or to hide a noise, for example a scream, with a more effective sound effect. Directors such as Quentin Tarantino use this a lot in his films. Fidelity. Fidelity is the extent which sound is faithful to the source as we see it. For example, if a gun is being fired, we expect to hear a shot. And I get the tinder rap. If there is a disparity of fidelity, there is a lack of fidelity. Lack of fidelity can take the audience from the scene and make them disorientated. Such as Charlie Brown, when the teacher is talking, their voice is humming and not really talking. For the ex expectation of this, we would be hearing the speech of the teacher in the background. I volunteer to be first. 
If sound on a film is from a character or an object in the story, it is known as diegetic sound. This is sound that you expect to hear. In Jaws, there is a scene on the beach and has the sound of waves and people talking, which is natural and realistic, and we expect to hear it. Non-diegetic. Non-diegetic sound is when the source is outside the narrative space. In Jaws, the non-diegetic is at the shark's point of view when they include tense music. In Guardians of the Galaxy, the diegetic sound comes from the non-diegetic when the music is played. This can be often confusing between the diegetic and non-diegetic. What the hell volume. just happened? A change in volume can be important and can impact the scene greatly. It can be used to emphasize a mood or atmosphere. Fight scenes use this a lot, like The Matrix from 1999.